Welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. I'm Tony Guerra, pharmacist, publisher, and professional editor, bringing you interviews and advice on succeeding in your residency journey. You can sign up for the email list at pharmacyresidencypodcast.com to get your free LOI template or get editing help working one-on-one with me at residency.teachable.com. Let's get started with the show. Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. I'm Tony Guerra, your host. I just want to let you know that I heard from one of my people I've been helping that they got their first interview, and uh, this makes sense. Uh, last, We don't really want to look at last year. The, the Google Doc is a really bit goofy for last year, but uh, 2021, you can look at it and you can see that... Um, I think we want to go 21, 21, 2022 here. Um, if you look in Alabama, I know that there was a site that emailed on 1228. Yeah. So DH, DCH Regional Medical Center in Tuscaloosa back in 2021, 2022 uh, emailed on 1228. So it's reasonable that a couple might be emailing now, uh, but don't really expect emails until uh, next month. So we've got a lot to cover. I want to talk a bit about uh, kind of introducing you to what you need to do uh, for the interviews. And uh, I know many of you are new to this. It's kind of like, you know, everybody's a first time home buyer. And I want to make sure that those of you that have never done this before uh, are not missing things out because uh, you just have gaps in how this works. So uh, one person that's really good to follow is Jason Mordino. Uh, I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name, but I think he is the RPD over at um, B, BM, BMC. Yeah, I think that's Boston Medical Center. Uh, so uh, a couple of things he tweeted about uh, recently. First, um, the spreadsheet. I'm going to explain what that is if you don't know what it is, uh, but the it is real and love it or hate it, uh, it does exist. Um, and I, I think that there's a real way to use the past data to, to really help you. And then second, he sent a reminder to all RPDs to send confirmation emails of receipt to your applicants. Um, it takes no time through forecasts and minimizes a lot of applicant anxiety. Um, and then if you need help, he said, don't uh, hesitate to DM. So I'll give him a, a like there. All right, so let's start with uh, what's going on with Reddit and we'll talk you through what's going on with interviews, uh, what to do uh, to make sure that everything is in place uh, as we go here. Okay. All right. Uh, first thing, uh, is it normal to not receive confirmation emails from programs that they have received your application? It is totally normal to receive them in the first week of January. So again, uh, these RPDs and uh, the residents, uh, they have jobs. <laughs> uh, being an RPD is not really a paid position. It's rather a responsibility within a position. So there are many programs uh, that the deadline is passed uh, and uh, they may be extending interviews. They may be you know, reviewing the applications, uh, but those receipts tend to not go out until beginning of January. Still, I will give you a place where you can get a template if you want to send them an email. Okay. Uh, second thing, what Google Sheet is he talking about? So uh, if you, I, I've got the Google Sheet on um, uh, residency.teachable.com. I'll show you where it is. Uh, it's going to be a little bit goofy in uh, Reddit, like where it is. There's a couple different places you can find it, but I want to show you the two different Google Sheets. Okay, the Google Sheet he's talking about is not this one. This is the Pharmacy Residency Program Comment Sheet. It has comments on about 50 uh, programs when you have, I think, almost 3,000 programs or 2,500 programs. You know, it just gives you kind of an idea of what to expect in terms of, you know, some feedback and things like that. But I don't know that it's necessarily super helpful uh, because there's just it's just such a small number uh, of them. That's not what he's talking about. This is a sheet where um, you can kind of fill out this form and say, hey, you know, this is uh, what I felt uh, this program was like and so forth. He's talking about this one. And 2023, 2024, its usefulness now 
uh, is especially for those PGY2s who are looking to, or to PGY2 applicants who are looking to find their, themselves a residency, uh, it does list many early commits. So you kind of just scroll down here and scroll down here we go and you can see that in Colorado there's a couple of early commits to a PGY2 in oncology PGY2 in organ transplant you can see the kinds of residencies where somebody would early commit uh, and you can also see okay well this is a place that I was considering uh, did someone already commit for 2023-2024 okay uh, now what you know is the usefulness of this document as you kind of go through this, you can kind of keep checking back to see if uh, people are getting their interviews, uh, if they're getting turned down or uh, what's going on. But uh, many people, I think it's a really useful thing to, to have. And I almost wish that it actually came from the sites where as soon as they, that it, instead of the students saying, hey, I got the interview, that the sites would say, hey, we sent out the interview. I think that would be much more useful and uh, it would just kind of create, you know, make sure that one, it, everything is, you know, you, you're only going to hear that somebody got an interview for these particular dates and that you, you're not going to necessarily hear about all the dates that are available. So uh, again, I, I think it's a useful document, uh, but it would be, you know, much, much better if, you know, the RPDs would, would be filling it out rather than the, the students themselves. Okay. Uh, and then this is the program call-out sheet. This actually should have kind of gone before that uh, other one. This is uh, where they're just kind of talking about uh, certain programs. Uh, in, in medical residencies, it's a lot easier. There's a ton more residents. So, uh, you know, there's the name and shame, but uh, I'm just going to kind of go past that one for now. All right. Uh, are residency applications viewed by RPD on a rolling basis or only after the deadline? Uh, it does depend on the program. Uh, some will wait till after the deadline. Others are going to uh, kind of look as they come through. Um, as I kind of move through this, uh, and again, this is anecdotal, but residency applications look to be down again. If this is the case, you're going to see, especially those sites that aren't getting a ton of applicants, um, try to get students in the interview a lot quicker. So a couple of good things are gonna happen here. First of all, you're going to hear from your interviews a lot sooner, hopefully. Second, they're probably going to offer virtual interviews because many times face-to-face -face is something that would make someone not consider a site, uh, even if they did apply. Uh, you know, it's throwing you know, good money after bad, is that the expression, where you, know, you spent X number of dollars on the application, but now you have to fly there. And you've seen flights, you've seen the disaster with flights, uh, that even if you wanted to go somewhere, could you even get there uh, in January, February? So I think it's unreasonable to require face-to-face -face interviews that are further than driving distance. Uh, but you're gonna see a lot of regionality to uh, the application process. So uh, answer the question, it depends uh, in terms of a rolling basis or after the deadline. Um, interview invites. Uh, so I just submitted my applications. I'm not expecting to hear much back until after the new year uh, when people traditionally started hearing it. Um, so first, uh, somebody says, make sure you check your spam folder because uh, sometimes that interview is there uh, and you may miss it uh, because it went to your spam folder. Some colleges have extremely, extremely, uh, what's the word I want to use? sensitive uh, junk mail filters. Uh, even when trying to communicate and help them with their letters of intent, I couldn't, never, I couldn't use their email at their pharmacy school because it was so sensitive that it couldn't even take a simple Gmail email. So if you've put your schools, make sure that uh, you're checking your junk folder, spam folder every single day, okay? Um, so do expect uh, those to come out about a week after the deadlines, uh, but you know, two to three weeks is, is not unreasonable. Okay. Uh, I've got a ton of free resources for you, and I, I will go over them 
just briefly now, and I'll go over them in, in a lot more detail as we get towards uh, the interview, but let's show you where you find these. These are all free resources. Um, so you go to residency.teachable.com forward slash the letter P is in Paul forward slash interview. So residency.teachable.com forward slash P forward slash interview. And one of the things that a lot of people ask is like, okay, so now it's hurry up and wait. I've gotten all my applications in. Other people are getting interviews. I'm hoping to get an interview. What do I do? You don't wait. Do not wait to prepare for the interview uh, because it will take, um, they tend to come fast and furious. And it just is much better if you start preparing now. So a couple of free resources I have. Um, what I've done is I've taken all of the tldrpharmacy.com, and I already talked to Brandon about this, uh, for residency interview clinical cases. So I have these already with links for... All right, I switched to preview mode to make it a little bit easier. Uh, but here are the list of cases that you probably are going to have and an overview from TLDR Pharmacy uh, about them. Uh, TLDR Pharmacy, if you've not seen tldrpharmacy.com before, these are the sheets. So antibiotics, uh, antibiotics, a quick and dirty guide, anticoagulation, the definitive guide, CHF, heart failure pharmacotherapy, uh, Pharmacology 101, an overview of statins, uh, PCSK9 inhibitors, so what you need to know, uh, diabetes, building a regimen, part one and two, insulin in the first, and then uh, another one with oral meds uh, and diabetes, hypertension, uh, pneumonia, UTI, uh, and then uh, warfarin. So again, it's reasonable that a fourth year pharmacy student, especially one who has had a number of uh, those uh, types of rotations should be very well versed uh, in these and again these guides are free uh, they're very easy uh, to read and there there's a lot of funny to them too so as you're trying to freak out it's kind of nice to have a couple memes and things like that that makes it a lot more enjoyable okay uh, the second thing I have for you here is a template, application confirmation template. Uh, last year, Forecast Web Admit had a problem where the it didn't send you, it was something like it didn't send you a receipt or uh, something like that. And uh, there was an alert uh, that let everybody know, hey, you know, that we're, we're, some of the confirmations weren't going through basically. So I just put what happened last year there. Uh, but I also gave you a uh, an alert template uh, to help you. So just one, make sure that subject line has a ton of information because RPDs are busy. These other residents are very busy. Uh, you want to make sure that your subject line has everything they need. So I put Tony Guerra, UMD Pharmacy School, which is my alma mater, residency application receipt. Uh, my name is Tony Guerra from the University of Maryland Pharmacy School, forecast ID, match number. I wanted to confirm that my application for the blank residency. Now an RPD can be the RPD of multiple residencies. So you must put the code. So if it's an ambulatory care and acute care, you have to put the code for the one that you're going to be doing. Has been received in full. I appreciate you taking the extra time to look. I know you're really busy. So I simply ask that you reply to an email with yes or no. Someone can do that. They're not gonna write you an email. They're just gonna say yes, no, maybe even just a Y or an N. That way they can, you know, the person can look into it. So again, I, I appreciate that Jason Mordino said, hey, RPDs, please send those receipts out because applicants will be freaking out that they didn't get their receipt. But if you wanna send an email, uh, here's a template to do it. I have the two spreadsheets that I talked about here. So the residency interview offers spreadsheet is the first one. And then kind of the good and bad residencies, that whole uh, opinion residency sheet is also here, but there's only 50 on there. So I, I don't know how useful that necessarily is. Uh, but I think this one is, is really useful. Kind of see what kind of timeline the places you're applying to have. Um, next thing was the 15 interviews worksheet. So one of the people I worked with got 15 interviews and it actually became a problem uh, because that many interviews, you 
have to kind of really work around it. And so I'm going to kind of show you some of the things that you're going to want to uh, start doing because on the flip side, you might not have thought that you were going to get that many interviews. And all of a sudden, you're a rock star, you've got great interviews, and you want to have some way of kind of doing this. So in the application, you know, you look at geographic location usually, how good they fit, what their reputation is, if they're an academic medical center, um, quality and quantity of residents, uh, the staffing, the pay, and you know, you kind of give it a score. On the ranking side, and if you look at medical residencies as well, ranking is something very different. So now you're going to say, well, after I've done these interviews, and you know, it's just like, dating I hear where online where you meet the person it's like meeting them for the first time all over again and where you're like oh wow on paper this was the one that I thought would be first but now having gone there I actually feel I connect really well here so goodness of fit is the most important thing uh, interview day experience how did you go uh, the location the quality of the residence the reputation becomes much much less important so as you are applying you, know, you probably apply to a number of places that have significant reputation because there's something that people have heard of. But as you actually go there, you find that, oh, yeah, I get why it has this good reputation, but uh, I'm seeing that there's a lot of burnout. And although the hospital is ranked very high, uh, it seems like it's a very, very tough place to, to succeed. Um, and then the RPD, staffing, pay, those are not in the top five of what people generally want, but I think that the RPD should be in your top five for sure. Uh, as somebody who's worked for, oh gosh, um, many, many years, uh, the person who's immediately your superior tends to be uh, really the most important factor in terms of how things go uh, throughout um, a job and then certainly residency. And then believe it or not, staffing and pay really don't make the top five. Those those aren't the most important thing when, when it comes to ranking. But I think that you should be mindful, if, especially if you have a significant other who hopes to see you from time to time uh, because staffing can be draconian. Okay? So I have this here where you've got your residency application, the top 15. And then you can kind of compare it to the rankings of the interviews that you've gotten uh, and so forth. But it's not uncommon for someone I work with to actually turn down interviews uh, because they were like, okay, well, if things came to it, I would go there. But now that I have this many interviews uh, that I'm, I'm going to kind of uh, just um, say, you know, let's just not waste each other's time. Uh, and I'm going to say, you know, no to this one or, you know, a couple of them. Okay. All right. And the last free uh, resource I have here is one that, that really helps you kind of look at um, the sites and see if it's something that, that you really match well to. And what I did was I just put a couple of students and their appies and I tried to match them to some of the more applied to sites. So uh, student one has admin, cardiology, critical care, drug info, emergency, ID, and internal med. That would match well with Mayo Rochester and Maryland UMS, University of Maryland Medical Center. Uh, but it might not be a good fit for UChicago, Yale, Cedar sinai UNC, NYU Langone, uh, Kentucky, Memorial Hermann, or Vanderbilt. It just might be better for those. Then student two has AmCare, cardio, critical care, internal med, pediatrics, practice, and then transitions. Uh, that matched really well to Chicago and Yale, New Haven, but maybe not so good to the other ones. Uh, and then student three, admin, AmCare, critical care, drug info, internal med, oncology, and peds. That matched really well to Cedar sinai and UNC, uh, but not some of the others. The big takeaway you really want to have is is it a prescriptive or non-prescriptive residency? A prescriptive residency is one where you might have eight weeks of elective, you know, out of the 52, where they're like, these are the rotations, this is what you're gonna get, this is how it's gonna work. And other ones are like, I think Vandy is, is a, the flagship here where I think they require critical care, internal med and nutrition and admin, and that's it and then the rest are electives. And it really depends on the site, but if you are moving towards a very specific specialty in PGY2, 
you would probably lean towards the one that is more elective heavy. And if you are leaning toward finishing your PGY-1 as kind of the end, uh, you may want to make it a much broader situation where it's already kind of filled out for you. And the reason that they're so prescriptive is that they know, based on their past experience, that you know the, they, and as a hospital, would prefer that you take these rotations to be competent within their hospital, but also that if you're going to be broad-based, there's going to be a bunch that you don't want to do uh, and that they're just going to have it there for you to make sure that you do do the uh, uh, rotations. But uh, just know that there's really kind of two different ones. There's some that are very prescriptive in that first year, PGY-1, and others that are not prescriptive at all and are really elective heavy. Okay, so that kind of, those are the, the resources I have for you, residency.teachable.com forward slash letter P forward slash interview. And, you know, whatever templates, Google Sheets, uh, you know, those uh, clinical cases, that's all there for you. The course itself is more for someone who wants to really understand the system itself. Uh, I have, uh, the curriculum includes a really thorough explanation of um, how do you figure out how you compare to other candidates and you know how do you do that clinical match analysis and then understanding the point system it's really really what you don't expect so the interview interview only is a small part of it uh, there are some other pieces that really are showing your competence so uh, although fit is super important um, that's about a third of it, but two thirds of it are your competence, your competence in making that presentation, your competence in solving the clinical case, and uh, there are ways to do better at that. Uh, I'll mention it over and over again, but please do not do a presentation that is a soap note subjective objective assessment and plan as to why they should pick you uh, it becomes very trite and it is possible for you to have someone else doing the exact same presentation uh, and that would be uh, just a disaster i will mention the rockstar and raystar mnemonics uh, in terms of answering questions uh, the rockstar is more about questions that are less behavioral and more straightforward like strengths and weaknesses the race star are those behavioral uh, questions that you're going to get. And then also how to do that kind of within the essay. So if you're presented with, okay, here's a half hour, uh, I need you to write an essay on blank. Okay, it's gonna help you uh, with that as well. And then in addition to some audio guides, I've also got the 100 questions. So there are uh, 100 strong residency questions, answers, and rationales. I've made a video for every single one of those so that you can just kind of push play and go through an interview just by kind of doing it within the course. And then there's some job interview stuff in there uh, as well. So, uh, but anyway, that, that's really more for somebody that has really never gone through this, wants the better understanding of what they're being scored on in, in the process. And anyone who does not get an interview would just get their money back. I'll just Venmo you like, here, sorry you didn't get an interview with PGY one, or in phase one and two. Uh, I'll be happy to, to return the money. All right, so let's kind of move on uh, to um, this year's applications. So uh, they're saying that how is the number of applicants this year comparing to previous years? Um, so we're seeing that uh, local RPDs are all down. Uh, most regional schools have been under capacity and then the scoring rubric uh, has cut out some things um, to differentiate candidates on the bubble but uh, what they're basically saying is uh, the enrollment is starting to hit some places regionally more than others although enrollment is only down 500 like there's 500 fewer graduates this year than last year that isn't to say that that's distributed evenly that each pharmacy school has three fewer graduates rather you're going to see that there are huge pockets where there are just fewer graduates and there are going to be fewer applicants um, so those areas are going to be much easier to get a pharmacy residency uh, and then those other areas that are still uh, relatively saturated they'll still be relatively competitive 
Uh, next one was, uh, what do they mean when they say the quality of candidates is down? Um, well, I, I don't know how they would know something like this. Uh, the person is a resident uh, putting this up, uh, you forward slash corner kicked. Um, it seems like students are just less com competent now. They still have all the same, I'm reading this, Aggie Tiger 91 said it and 48 upvotes. Uh, but due to COVID, seem less confident and knowledgeable. I think this can be fixed with time, but Appy students have been a struggle this year, especially with time management and respecting deadlines. Yeah, so what um, what they're basically saying is you haven't, this graduating class has been admitted at a higher rate than any graduating class before it. And this will be true for the next two years, going all the way up to 86%. So th this graduating class would admit it at 82%. And that means that over four out of five applicants who went to pharmacy school back four years ago or three years ago uh, were admitted. And that has some effect on it. But uh, the other piece is that when you don't have as competitive a group, then you also don't raise your game as much. And I think that that's what they're, they're really talking about. But um, there's some frustration that uh, an appy preceptor will fail a student, but the school won't fail the student. And that's just saying, okay, well, we appreciate that, but you're not a real faculty anyway. Uh, so we're going to override you here. Yeah, you're right. They're not paid, um, but they're providing the experience. And so, you know, how do you kind of deal with that? Uh, but anyway, uh, there's kind of a lot of uh, anger and, and being upset that the, the quality of, of students has, has gone down. And it makes sense. 82% is, is a massive shift from what it was about 10, 12 years ago when it was harder to get into pharmacy school than medical school. I think it was around 30% uh, were being admitted. And now, you know, PCAT's gone. It, you know, the, the bar is even lower. Uh, but to be fair, they actually reduced acceptance rates uh, last year. Uh, it went down from like 86% to like 85 or 87 to 85, something like that. But uh, they did kind of tighten the screws a, a little bit, uh, but it's still, it's still in the mid 80s, which is crazy. All right, uh, and then faculty member not responding, uh, letter of recommendation back in November. Um, you know, hopefully you have that person's uh, number, you can text them, but um, some faculty, they are on vacation and that's just how it is. Uh, ASHP was supposed to change it to January, but they didn't. So, uh, you know, it is what it is with these early deadlines. So hopefully you'll have another way of contacting that faculty member. Let them know that, hey, uh, I'm really behind the eight ball here. Uh, I only have two LORs and the residency committee may or may not evaluate my um, application. And I feel like at the sites where they're really kind of hurting for people, uh, they're going to you know, give that a pass. Uh, but those other sites where they're just looking for any excuse to get rid of an application, uh, that's going to be a real bad thing. So you're really going to want to get in touch with that faculty member. All right, so I've gone through a lot, but um, kind of comes back to, to what Jason was saying that, you know, on both sides of things. So first, the spreadsheet, um, you're going to start seeing uh, the interviews being offered, especially in the first week of next year. And you're going to start freaking out that you didn't get your first interview offer. And it really kind of depends on the site. Um, I am seeing that people are applying to fewer places. So having applied to fewer places, that's also going to make it even worse because you're going to have many fewer uh, chances to, to get that back. Uh, next thing is, you know, to the RPDs, it, it really does help if the RPDs do send out that uh, email of receipt uh, to the applicant. I get it. You've got, you know, dozens of applications, maybe even hundreds with, you know, like the UNCs and places like that. Uh, but it does make things so much better uh, on that side. But I understand why you wouldn't do that. So some professors, and I'm not just saying pharmacy school, this is a professor thing, will not answer an email, especially tenured ones, uh, that uh, they don't feel is, they don't want to start an email thread. 
Okay. So what they don't want to do is send you an email and basically say, hey, just want to let you know that we received your application because then you're going to say, oh, thank you. I appreciate you emailing me. Okay. Another email. No problem. Okay. Thanks again. You know, you, you don't want to have that. So again, um, it just uh, be wary. So I apologize. This went to 30 minutes, but uh, I feel like, you know, now that the interviews are out, uh, it's time to kind of go through the, the basics uh, and residency.teachable.com forward slash P forward slash interview. Uh, you can get those free resources there. Thanks for listening to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. You might also like to check out our available residency audiobooks at pharmacyresidencypodcast.com forward slash books, where you can get your first book free if you've never been on Audible before, or work one-on-one with me as a professional editor at residency.teachable.com. Feel free to send an invite to connect with me, Tony PharmD, on LinkedIn, or email me at tonythepharmacist at gmail.com with questions. Music was by Policy.